Hey art nerds, happy holidays. So I have another really cute paper child tutorial for you guys. This is the second part in the tree hugger little mini series. So this paper child is designed to hang over a tree branch. It was a little bit hard for me to pose this one because she doesn't self stand. So I had to find something to hang her from. But you can see it's done by creating kind of a bracket with a sheet of paper and hanging the front off of the back. So in part one of this tutorial, I showed you guys how to paint this cutie. If you guys happen to miss it, there's a link to that in the description below. There's also a link to where you can print out the liner if you want to color your own or where you could print out this paper child. So the materials you'll need to assemble this paper child are pretty straightforward. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You might want to have an X-Acto blade. You're going to need some popsicle sticks or something else to add a little bit of structure, although it's not as important on this one as it is in some of the self-standing paper children. You're going to need some tape. I recommend double stick tape or a tape runner. You're also going to need some single-sided tape. You may also want to have some adhesive foam tape like I have here. And you may want to have some paper craft style glue like the Mono Aqua or a glue stiff. You don't want to use like Elmer's glue or any really wet glue for this because really wet glues can cause the paper to warp. You're also going to want some adult supervision if you are a younger artist and you're assembling this on your own. This could be a great project to collaborate on. You can color it, they can cut it out, and together you can assemble it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove some of the extra paper from my illustration. So I'm actually using a large paper cutter like this one. You don't have to use a paper cutter, but I can't cut a straight line to save my life. You're going to want to set those large, long pieces of watercolor paper or whatever paper you printed this onto. You're going to want to set those aside because we're going to need those, if not in this tutorial, in a later Paper Child tutorial. Speaking of, this is a third in the series, so if you have fun cutting and assembling this one, check out the other two that are already out. I'll link them in the cards as well as in the description below. I'll also link the materials that we used as well as where you can get the liner and the printable, both of which are free. So next, I'm going to use the scissors to just kind of cut off some of the excess paper and make this a little bit easier to handle. Now that I have the excess paper cut, I'm going to remove the arm portion away from the main body portion. Now this was done in two pieces, so we can kind of create that hangover effect. So now that I've got these in a more manageable size, I'm going to go in with an X-Acto blade and do a bit of fussy cutting. I'm going to cut some of the areas that would be difficult for me to cut with the larger pair of scissors that I'm using. If you're doing this along at home, this is an excellent time to ask an adult for help. And all this cutting is incredibly tedious, so now is a good chance to remind you guys that this video has been time-lapsed, 
several times. Some portions of this video are more time lapse than others. So if you don't work this fast, don't worry. Nobody works this fast. So this is a great chance to put on some music that you love, maybe some holiday tunes, and just kind of chill out and cut out your paper child. It's also a great opportunity for me to tell you guys that this little cutie here is Kara from my webcomic 7-inch Kara. It's a charming comic about a 7-inch tall little girl who explores the larger outside world with the help of a human teenager and her pet kitten. And all of the paper children that I did for the 2020 Christmas Paper Child set are from that comic. So I'd really love it if you guys would check it out. It's at 7inchkara.com. You'll find a link down in the description below. Volume 1 is out in print and available if you'd like to purchase it and volume two is available for pre-order. Kara and her friends are Lilliputians. They're a race of tiny humans and if you're as excited by the thought as I am, I have Lilliputian Living. It's a compendium of everything you need to know about Lilliputian daily life. So from teeny tiny Lilliputian professions like spider breeder or like messenger or even like brewer, to the seasons and to different types of Lilliputians from traditionalists who live out in the swamp to mall Lilliputians who actually live in malls. I have so much information about Lilliputian daily life in the Lilliputian Living Compendium. And that's also available for pre-order in my shop. So I hope you guys will check that out. So once I've done all the fine cutting, I'm just going to go in with the scissors and trim away, remove the excess paper. You don't have to cut it this fine. In some of my other paper child tutorials, I do what's known as halo cutting, where you live, leave a halo of paper around the paper child and you don't cut out any of those little paper islands. It still works just fine. The illusion is still super cute. I just decided to do what's known as kiss cutting where you cut along the line art for this one. If you have a Cricut or another like auto cutting machine like that, this could be a great opportunity to save your hands and try it out. So it took a little while for me to cut everything out and I had to take a couple of breaks to stretch my hands and to crack my knuckles. Good hand health is important, so take breaks when your hands start to hurt. But now that it's cut out, we can finally assemble it. So this one is super easy. We're just creating the illusion of the arms hanging over the rest of the body. 
So I'm going to use one of the scrap pieces of paper that I saved and I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to basically bend it into a little shelf. And it's okay if you have some overages, we're just getting the general idea here. I'm going to try it out and trim off some of the excess. I'm also going to trim off some of the excess on the sides so it's not visible from the back of the paper child. And I'm using a double-sided tape runner here. You can use double-sided tape for this. But first, I'm going to use some double stick tape to stick a popsicle down her back. And that's just going to give us some extra structure. So she's going to be less likely to kind of blow in the wind if you happen to have a fan on. And she's going to be less likely to warp. This is particularly important if you're working on thinner papers, but if you're working along at home, I recommend you print this out on at least cardstock or 90 pound watercolor paper, a heavier paper. So something a little lighter than say a thin piece of cardboard, but heavier than regular printer paper. I'm also using some single sided tape just to secure that popsicle stick down her back so it doesn't peel off later on. So I have applied some dry adhesive to the little shelf we've built and I'm going to stick one side on her body and one side on her arms. So you can see how it makes a little shelf and it creates the illusion that her arms are coming out from her body and hanging over the branch. Now I made my shelf a little bit too deep. It looked a little unrealistic. So I'm going to do some trimming here and make it a little bit thinner. You need it to be thick enough that it'll actually go over your tree branch. And this works particularly well with artificial trees. But if you try this out at home, I would love to see it. So please tag me at NattoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, so I can check out your work. So you want to make sure you get a really good seal. So I'm taping using the single sided tape, I'm taping that little shelf to the front of her body. And there we have it, et voila, we are finished. So down in the description below, you can find an already colored version of this printable if you just wanna assemble it and pose it in your house. But if you're the creative type, you can also print out the line art and color it yourself, or you could design your own based on what I showed you guys here. As you can see, it's really not that complicated, and I bet you're smart enough to figure out how to create your own. So all that's left is to display it. And like I mentioned earlier, this one is designed to hang on a Christmas tree. So you guys see my white artificial Christmas tree here. We have a candy theme going on. And if you look super closely, you might even see some of the other paper children from the earlier videos. So it's important to find just the right branch to place them. So it took me a moment to kind of figure out where I wanted to put her. But once I know, you can just slot them over the tree branch. Now you might find it helpful to maybe even put a magnet between the bottom of the ornament in the design and her dress so that it snaps shut and holds the branch even more securely. I didn't do that as you guys see. Uh, and that's to accommodate maybe hanging her over a wreath or putting her on other objects. And I'm just adjusting the branches to kind of help hold her in place so it looks a little bit more natural. There now, all finished. Our third paper child is now proudly displayed amongst my Christmas decorations. So I hope you guys will try this activity out at home. If you do, please tag me. And if you know someone else who'd enjoy working on this video or would enjoy this tutorial, please do me a big favor and send it their way. I have eight more, no, seven, math time, Becca. I have a bunch, I have a bunch more tutorials that show you how to create different paper child designs coming up all the way until Christmas. So I hope you guys will check them out.